Hey Internet, this is Jacob Clifford. Welcome to ACDC Econ. Congratulations on finishing your macroeconomics class. You are now done. Here's the conquering hero. You understand everything. You can control the entire economy. Awesome. I mean, not really. I mean, not at all. In fact, all the concepts you learn in introductory economics class, they're kind of true, right? They're kind of a kind of a painting of real life, even though there's a lot of big pieces missing. It's kind of like impressionism. You can definitely see what's going on, but the details are kind of blurry and kind of blah. But at this stage of the game, you understand there's some key graphs that you have to know for your final exam or for the AP test. And more importantly, you should be able to see how they're connected to each other. And that is what we're gonna do in this video. The easiest graph in the class is the business cycle. It shows the economy can be in one of three places, a recessionary gap, full employment, or inflationary gap. Easy, you got it. But that graph also connects to the production possibilities curve that shows the same concept. Again, the economy can be at one of three places, which can also be shown on aggregate demand and supply, right? Shifting that supply and demand curve around show you that you can have a recessionary gap, full employment, or an inflationary gap. And we're not done, there's more. There's also the Phillips curve, which shows the same concepts. Recessionary gap, full employment, inflationary gap. So four graphs, three you probably need for your test, the business cycle not so much, all show the same concept, where is the economy? Then you learn the money market graph. Now this doesn't show you where the economy is, but it does show you how interest rates affect the economy. So monetary policy increased the money supply would decrease nominal interest rates, lower nominal interest rates would increase investment, more investment means more aggregate demand, right? An increase in consumer spending and investment, that's expansionary monetary policy. And since we're here, a decrease in the money supply would increase interest rates, which would decrease investment and lower investment means lower aggregate demand, decrease in consumer spending and investment spending. That is contractionary monetary policy. Okay, we got it. You can also connect the money market graph to the loanable funds market. I actually made a whole nother video on that. Go ahead and watch it. It talks about all the stuff in details, why one's the nominal interest rate and why the other one's the real interest rate. So go watch that for the details. But what about the last graph, the foreign exchange market graph? That's not really connected to any of the others, except it is. Take a look at this. This shows the loanable funds market, which sets the real interest rate and its effect on net capital outflow. Remember, this is connected to the balance of payments and the financial account. This is the idea of foreigners buying financial assets in another country. So what determines if foreigners buy our assets or if we buy their assets? Well, the real interest rate. So right here at zero, that means there's no deficit or surplus in the financial account. But if the interest rate goes up, a higher interest rate will lead to less outflow. Less outflow means more inflow, right? Higher interest rate would mean more people want to lend in your country, which totally makes sense. If the United States had a higher real interest rate, then foreigners would want to buy American bonds so they get that higher rate of return. But if the real interest rate in the United States was lower, then foreigners would take their money out and more Americans would buy other countries' higher interest rate assets. So that means there's an increase in outflow from the United States. Did that make any sense? Does that make sense? Now that quantity of money coming in or going out of your country determines the amount of money that's available to be exchanged in the foreign exchange markets. So that helps determine the value of your currency. That's the graph down there. All right now you're probably thinking, wait a second, wait a second. The foreign exchange market does not have a vertical supply curve. It has an upward sloping supply curve and you're totally right, 100%. But in this case, we're just looking at the money that's available in the foreign exchange market that's there from people who are buying and selling assets from different countries. Just the money that's available based on people's willingness to borrow and lend in different countries based on the real interest rate. Don't freak out. It'll make more sense when I show you a shift on these three graphs. So let's assume there's an increase in investment and people want to borrow more because the economy is doing well in the United States. So the demand goes up for loanable funds, which leads to a higher real interest rate. Now that real interest rate would attract more foreigners foreign investment into the United States. In other words, the outflow would decrease. So that's shown on that graph right there. It's showing you that foreigners are putting more money in the United States to get that higher rate of return. But it's also showing you that Americans are deciding to lend less in other countries, right? They're keeping their money inside the United States. That means there's less 
dollars available in the foreign exchange, which is shown on that bottom graph. So you can think of that vertical curve as a supply curve for the currency available in the foreign exchange. There's less dollars available because Americans are keeping it in their own country. That would lead to an increase in the value of dollars or appreciation. Again, this is nothing new. You've learned this back in unit five, but the reason why I'm showing you this is because I want to connect the loanable funds market graph to the foreign exchange market graph and show you how those things are connected and maybe hopefully solidify things in your brain. Come over here, big group hug, group hug. Okay, let's do that again, except this time let's look at a decrease in the real interest rate. So let's assume that the United States, there's an increase in savings and Americans decide to save more. So the supply of loanable funds shifts to the right, decreasing the real interest rate. Now, what happens to net capital outflow. Americans don't want to buy American assets. They want to go buy foreign assets to get that higher rate of return. And foreigners don't want to buy American assets either. They want to keep their money in their own countries and get that higher rate of return in their own countries. The net capital outflow will increase and the United States will move towards a financial account deficit. And with all these Americans going out there buying foreign assets, that increases the quantity of dollars out in the foreign exchange market, which would decrease the value of that currency. So the dollar will depreciate. So does that make sense? Does it help you understand the idea of loanable funds and how the real interest rate affects the financial account and how the financial account affects the exchange rate. Does it make sense? Let me know how else I can help you if this video helps or if you need more stuff, let me know. Also check out my other videos and the Ultimate Review Packet. Thanks for watching. Until next time.